Good day, fellow planeteers. My name is Sitlem Lunyeni. I am a student at the Cape Peninsula University of Technology, and I am currently doing a master's in environmental management. And in today's talk, we will be focusing on the theory of plate tectonics. So we know the structure of the Earth by the way in which seismic waves travel throughout the Earth. Now this tells us that the Earth is hot and melty inside. Now convection within this layer causes continents to move, which is continental drift. And continental drift is the foundation of plate tectonics. Now what will be further discussed in this talk will help us know why this phenomena is special in South Africa. So this is the hierarchy of models, and in the hierarchy of models, our talk lies on point number four, which consists of drifting continents, climate change, ice ages, and evolution. So what have we learned before? So, so far we have learned about the Big Bang Theory and how everything came into existence. We also learned that the Earth's temperature are not too hot and not too cold, but they are just right for life to exist in it. We also learned that the Earth's distance from the Sun is not the reason why the planet is habitable. We also learned about circulating atmospheres and circulating oceans. And most recently, we learned about models. We learned that there are different types of models. But most importantly, we learned that all models are wrong, but some are useful. And as I've previously mentioned, today we will be learning about plate tectonics. Plate tectonics is one of the natural driving forces of climate change. The first one is the Milankovitch cycles, which we learned from in the previous talk about paleoclimates. Now, this graph is a representation of how the Earth's temperatures have changed over time. The y-axis represents the temperature in degrees Celsius, while the x-axis represents time in millenniums, and zero represents the present time. So, the previous talk has alluded to us that the fluctuation in temperatures from present to 3 million years ago was caused by the Milankovitch cycles. Now what the previous talk didn't tell us is what happened at this, at this point. So it didn't tell us what happened from 3 million years ago to 250 million years ago. So we, you'll notice that there's a, in, an increase in temperature at this point and then there's a drastic decrease. Now our talk will help us find out what caused the drastic decrease in temperature. So stay tuned. So in order for us to understand what plate tectonics is, we first need to understand the Earth from the outside and in the inside. So this is how the Earth looks from the outside and this is how we should know it. It is round. And so from the inside, the structure of the Earth is made up of three layers, the core, the mantle and the crust, which are further divided into two. So for the core, you will get the inner core, which is solid, and the outer core, which is liquid. And then you'll get the lower mantle and the upper mantle. And you'll get the crust, which is where we live in. It consists of the continental crust and the oceanic crust. Now, the crust and the uppermost part of the mantle is known as the lithosphere. Litho meaning stone and sphere meaning round or ball. And below the lithosphere, you'll find the asthenosphere. Asthenos means weak. Sphere means ball. So now that we know about our Earth structure, let us, let us find out what plate tectonics is. So what is plate tectonics? Plate tectonics is the theory that the Earth's outer shell is divided into several plates that glide over the mantle. So what does this tell us? This tells us why um, the Earth's geography has changed over time and why it continues to change. It tells us why mountain ranges are located where they are. It tells us why some regions are prone to earthquakes while others are not. And it also tells us why other regions um, have deadly, mild or no volcanic eruptions at all. And so, where did it all begin? Well, it started with the famous um, German meteorologist named Alfred Wagner. So Alfred Wagner came up with the continental drift theory. So he theorized that the continents were once in one big supercontinent. 
and he named this supercontinent Pangaea, which means all land. He further theorized that this big supercontinent further fragmented into two smaller land masses, which were named Laurasia and Gondwanaland. And as years went by, this um, fragments drifted into the continents that we have today. And with the continental drift theory, Alfred Wagner um, and those that advocated for the continental drift theory came up with substantial evidence that supported their point of view. Now let us examine the evidence. The first set of evidence is the jigsaw puzzle. You will notice that there is a best fit between South America and Africa when you're looking at their continental shelf, which suggests that the continents were part of a, a supercontinent. The second set of evidence is the distribution of fossils. So here, Alfred Wagner um, found evidence of similar fossil species at South America and also in Africa. Through literature review, Alfred Wagner learned that most paleontologists were actually in agreement that some type of land um, connection was needed in order to explain the existence of similar Mesozoic age life forms that, um, that existed in widely separated land masses. And the next step, set of evidence is glacial scarring. So Alfred Wagner noticed that there were traces of glaciation or glacial scarring in areas where glaciation did not occur anymore. You'll notice that in South America, Africa, India and Australia, there are still traces of glaciation. And the last set of evidence is the rock types. So if continents were together, it means that the rocks found in a particular region on one continent should closely match in age and type with those that are found in adjacent positions on the once adjoining continent. So Alfred Wagner found evidence of 2.2 billion year old igneous rocks in Brazil and these rocks actually resemble similarly aged rocks that were found in Africa. Now with all the evidence that Alfred Wagner collected, his theory was still rejected and this was because Alfred Wagner could not adequately explain why or how the continents um, moved. And it is also good to note that Alfred Wagner was actually ahead of his time because the tools and the techniques and the instruments that, that, were, that he needed to actually test out his hypothesis were actually not available during Wagner's days or during Wagner's time. And so even though his um, hypothesis was actually um, rejected, it was actually um, the foundation of a scientific revolution because now we've got, we have um, plate tectonics, which was initially an idea that Alfred Wagner came up with. So now that we know about plate tectonics and how it actually began, we need to understand or we need to know what causes or what caused the continental drift. So this is where Arthur Holmes comes in. So Arthur Holmes was a British um, geologist who actually argued that huge um, convection cells existed within the earth and this accounted for the continental drift theory. Um, so plate movement is the phenomenon that caused um, continents to move. And so what drives plate movement? Well, it's convection cells. So convection cell is when warm air rises and cool air descends or sinks. And so this happens in the mantle. And this graph is just an illustration of what I've just explained. So this is the core and this is the mantle. So this is your warm air that is rising. And once it reaches to the top, it becomes cooler and then it descends again. So an everyday example could be of a pot on a stove, a pot of boiling water on a stove. So say this was your um, stove and this was the boiling water inside the pot. So as the water boils, the water will get warm and it will rise. And once it rises and meets with the colder water, it will become cool again and then it will go it will descend again and the cycle will go on. And so this is what actually happens inside our mantle, which causes our plates to move. And now that we know about what happens in the mantle, we also need to understand that our lithosphere is broken up into different lithospheric plates or just plates. 
So um, these plates, okay, so there are seven major plates and these major plates are located according to the continents. So for example, you'll get the African plate and Africa is within the African plate and you'll get the Eurasian plate and Eurasia is within the Eurasian plate. We also have minor plates, but in this case, we will be mainly focusing on the um, major plates. And so these red arrows are just an indication of how these plates are actually moving with reference or with regards to each other. So around this lithosphere plate, we have what we call our plate boundaries, which are breaks between plates. So we have three types of plate boundaries, and I'll be using these to just explain how the plate boundaries work. So the first one is the divergent plate boundary. So di means apart. So the divergent plate boundary means that the plates are actually moving apart. So the plates are moving apart. And the second set of plate boundaries is the convergent plate boundary. So the convergent plate boundary is when the plate boundaries are actually moving towards each other. And the last plate boundaries are the transform plate boundaries. And with the transform plate boundaries, you find that the plate boundaries are actually sliding past or they're grinding past each other. Now, let's examine each of these plate boundaries on their own. So divergent plate boundaries are also known as constructive margins. So what happens is as the plates move apart, there is upwelling of hot material from the mantle, which creates a new sea floor. And the convergent plate boundaries is also known as the destructive margins. Now you get three types of convergent plate boundaries. Now the first one is when you have the oceanic crust and the continental crust coming together. So what happens is the oceanic crust will then subduct because it's, it is much denser. And what happens here is you will have these trenches that are occurring when these two meet. And the second one is when you have the oceanic and the oceanic coming together. And when this happens, um, the other one still subducts and actually both subduct. And volcanic island trenches are also created within this one. And you'll notice that there is an, a volcanic island arc that occurs when this, um, these boundaries meet. And then the last one is when the continental and the continental crust meet. Now when these two meet, mountain ranges are actually formed. And the last one is the transform plate boundary. Now it is also known as the conservative margins. And now in with the, we mentioned that with the transform plate boundaries, the plates are actually gliding or they are sliding past one another. And with this one, they do not produce and they do not destroy the lithosphere. And so let's look at the effects of plate movement. So at divergent boundaries, you will notice that there would be um, shallow earthquakes that would, that would occur. And also you'll have the mid-oceanic ridge. An example is the mid-Atlantic Ocean ridge. And then also new oceans, seas and lakes are formed when at divergent boundaries. An example is the Lake Tanganyika. And another one is the island, islands from volcanic cones and ridges rising above sea level. An example is the Gulf Island in the Atlantic. And this is just an example of the real life effects of earthquakes. And so this is how or what, what effect um, these earthquakes have on the environment and, and the people. And at convergent boundaries, there are formation of mountain ranges. A great example is the Andes and the Himalayas, and this occurs when the continent and the continent actually meet together. And then you'll get most active volcanoes such as the Sakam Pacific Ring of Fire, and there's also deep ocean trenches that occur such as the Perucho, and this is when the oceanic and the oceanic crust meet. And we also have um, the effects of the tra at transforming zone, such as the San Andreas Fault, which happened in San Francisco many years ago. And so we are back to our graph. So in the beginning, we learned that there was a drastic decrease in temperature and we were trying to find out what caused this drastic decrease in temperature. Well, it is caused by plate movement. So what happened is um, 
at 250 million years ago we had this supercontinent and Antarctica was also part of this continent and so when the circulate when the ocean started to circulate because Antarctica was also part of it of part of this um part of the rest of the world there was less um a reflection of heat and it was quite warmer and so as the continent started to um, split together now when the southern ocean the southern ocean was then able to circulate around antarctica alone and now there was um, more reflection of heat which meant that antarctica was na now very cold and icy so the drastic um, the drastic decrease in temperature was actually caused by plate movement that is amazing. Now, how does plate movement make the planet habitable? The first one is land distribution. Now, as the continent started to drift, um, the climatic conditions are actually now favorable for life to exist on Earth. And the second one is formation of new minerals. This means that when um, plate tectonics occurs, new rocks are actually formed and they are exposed um, to the surface, which is actually um, good for... Um, chemical reactions which actually produce um, these um, new minerals and the last one is greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide and water which occur through volcanism and now why is South Africa special in terms of plate tectonics well um, South Africa is not located on an active plate boundary which means that we are actually at a safe position and the second one is the fact that we had an and a geologist who was Al Alexander Dutoit. So Alexander Dutoit was one of those pe those um, scientists that actually advocated for the continental drift theory. And he also did his own um, re further experiments and researches. And he was the one who actually came up with the two, um, two continents, the Laurasia and Gondwana land. He was the one who actually named them according to their northern and their southern um, Poles. So we know that the Earth is round from the outside, and we also know that the Earth is structured it has, is structured into three layers, consists of the core, the mantle, and the crust. We also know that the um, continental drift is actually the uh, foundation of plate tectonics, and we also know that South Africa is not located on an active plate boundary. And so far, we have a physical model that explains how the Earth works, and it also explains how or why the planet is habitable. But now we also need to add life into our model. So our next talk will be focusing on that. So please stay tuned. And thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed the talk. Bye.